On Miodo, or the way of yin and yang, was a style of cosmology and divination very much rooted in the philosophies of the five elements and yin and yang, which were both introduced to Japan in the 6th century by the Chinese. Taking these principles and combining other influences such as Shintoism, Buddhism, and Taoism, on Miyoto was a bit of a catch-all, being regarded as a way to produce calendars and to tell fortunes among many other things. Much of On Miyoto was taught as it was mainly through oral tradition. What has been handed down to us is fragmented and many of the surviving rituals and records have been recreated based on a few written accounts found in texts left behind by Heian period practitioners. The Heian period was the heyday for Onmyodo. It was extremely popular amongst the nobles. The prominence was often found amongst wealthier people and nobility who would build their lives around the recommendations of, of Onmyoji, or the practitioners. The Ritsuyo, a law system of the time inspired by Confucianism and Tang Dynasty China, put forth litigation prohibiting Buddhists from practicing fortune-telling or astrology, and this established the Onmyo Ryo Bureau, whose job it was to oversee the divinations of Onmyoji and created a system of government-controlled and sanctioned Onmyoji that would dominate the practice and cement it in the minds of all of Japan. One of the most famous Onmyoji was Abi no Seme son of Abiro Yasuya and Kuzunoha, whose myth I told in the previous video. Abino Yasuna, Seme's father, was also an Onmyoji, who was in fact a student of Kamono Yasunori, another famous Onmyoji. Part of the story of the Kuzunoha and Abino Seme is covered in a kabuki play about Domen. Here's part of the story that I didn't cover, that's included in that. Abeno Yasuna is a student of the late court astrologer Kamono Yasunori and is supposed to marry Yasunori's adopted daughter, Sakaki no Mai. However, there is an important ceremony to show that Sakaki no Mai has proper possession of the books of magic belonging to her father and villains have stolen them. She commits suicide to atone, and Yasuna is driven mad with grief. As he wanders through the countryside, he comes to his senses and rescues a fox that is being chased by a hunter. In gratitude, this fox takes the form of Sakaki no Mai's younger sister, Kuzunoha, and lives with Yasuna quietly in the country. They have a son named Doji. Doji later goes by Abino Seme. Seme was such an amazing figure that Following his death, he became legendary. The Kuzunoha myth was part of the way that they grew his mythos to deify him in a sense. The fantastic life of Abino Seme begins with his ancestors. Many potential ancestors include Abino Masuki, Abino Shunzai, Abino Muishi, Abino Nakamaro. They are all high ranking government officials. Miyushi leaving a legacy as being part of the tale of the bamboo cutter, which was later adapted by Asao Takahata in his final film, The Tale of Princess Kaguya. These historical figures being linked to Abi no Seme probably were meant to help show off how he had a great ancestral lineage. Seme was a student of the father and son duo Kamono Tadoyuki and Kamono Yasunori, eventually taking Yasunori's position in the imperial court. He was said to be able to summon and command weak oni at the age of five. However, many stories of Semei's skills and powers are regarding him as an old man, as Semei didn't reach the level of prominence and success until his 50s or even 60s. Semei's duties included analyzing strange events, conducting exorcisms, warding against evil spirits, and performing various rites of geomancy. He said to be especially skilled in divining the sex of fetuses and finding lost objects. According to the Kanjaku Monogatari Shu, he, he correctly predicted the abdication of Emperor Kazan based on his observation of celestial phenomena. Ujishui Monogatari, another collection of tales from the 13th century, stressed his extraordinary 
paranormal powers. In said collection, Seimei defends a chamberlain against a rival Onmyoji Shikigami. He kills a frog with a blade of grass and dispels a monk's Shikigami using his magical powers. Shikigami are spirits made alive through special ritual and this was a strength of Seimei. That first story actually inspired Taito Monogatari, a book published in the 1980s starring Yasunori Kato and Yasuma Hirai. Kato's rival, who both function as the fictional descendants of Abino Seme and possibly Domen. A key descriptor of Kato is that he's an oni with a mastery of Onmyoto and a hatred of Japan. He bears Seme's star, our Seimen, his symbol he created in the 10th century, based off of the Japanese bellflower and symbolizing the five elements. Now, I want to explain what an oni is. An oni doesn't mean what you're thinking of back in the time of Abino Seme. Kami and yokai simply didn't exist. Instead, the general concept was just that of oni. Oni were essentially the embodiment of the unknown. Why does the house make strange noises at night? It's oni. Why do I feel like I'm being watched? It's oni. Why am I so unlucky? It's an oni. Why do they die when they looked perfectly healthy? It was an oni. This would later develop into the concept of kami and yokai, which pretty much are the same thing. Abino Seme was able to control and dispel these spirits at his will, eventually being able to control and summon up to 12 at a time. Eventually though, he would actually steal away his Oni as his wife grew tired of their presence. He sealed them away under the bridge in front of his house. So I keep mentioning Domen a lot. It's hard to say anything about Ashiya Domen without talking about his relation to Seimei. This is due to the way the myth likes to pit him and Seimei as rivals. Even his own kabuki play, Ashiya Domen Kagami, heavily features Seimei and even tells of the story of the Kusunoha. So Domen was Seimei's rival. The relationship was that of a talented and popular on Myoji and someone who really wished to kick him off his high horse. Domen was a different sort of Onmyoji. His specialty was actually casting curses, basically seeking Oni onto other people. A good example of Seimei and Domen's rivalry would be a challenge that Domen issued to Seimei. Domen had a box of oranges, which Domen knew had 15 oranges. He stated that he had divined that, and he challenged Seimei to figure out what the contents of the box actually were. Seimei knew that he was being tricked and used his magic to transform the oranges into rats. Then he proudly claimed that there were 15 rats in the box. When it was opened, Domen was surprised and had to admit defeat. Abino Seimei died in the year 1005. In the year 1007, a shrine honoring him was built where his house once stood. His reputation and tales about him grew as people recalled that he lived a generally healthy life with no great illnesses or pains and he lived very long, living to be nearly 86 years old. His shrine grew in popularity for its charms and wards among young schoolgirls and stands as a testament to his long-standing popularity. In line with Abino Semi's life as an astrologer, even an asteroid is named after him, discovered by Kichiro Furukawa and Hiroki Kosai during the year 1976. His storied life as a protector of Japan and, and master of Oni summoning was the backbone that Atlas needed when they decided to create a new Gaiden to the Shin Megami Tensei series, a Gaiden game based on a family of devil summoners. Next, in the final video, I hope to explore the Kuzunoha in Megaten. Thank you guys for watching, and goodbye, fellow Megatenists.